You ever seen your grandpa's Lincoln do this? <laughs> Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And I can't tell you how happy I am today to be back in the luxury American land yacht business with this, my latest purchase, a 1996 Lincoln Mark 8. And before you today is the last of the dinosaurs. This is the last full-size American rear wheel drive land yacht. And it is big, but not only that, but it's the last American land yacht that's rear wheel drive that was built with a focus of luxury and comfort first, and they didn't care about anything else. Now, to give a little background, this is obviously the eighth generation of the Mark series of Lincoln Continentals, which dates back all the way to the 1930s, and Lincoln really wanted to be bold with their new design. Other automakers were doing their own crazy new things in the 90s, different styling, radical departures from the norm, the old blocky cars of the 70s and 80s, and Lincoln wanted to get in on the fun, and this was it. Well, actually, not this initially. The designer that came up with it originally had some crazy design where this was all pillarless. It was basically this shape, but really spaceship looking. The Lincoln guys, the executives, took one look at it and thought it was absolutely hideous. They made them put a normal roof on it. They made them add a bunch of chrome everywhere, as you can see, like an old Lincoln. And this was the result. Still, even though they did throw some old school luxury touches on this thing, it is different from any Lincoln ever made before and ever made since. It is really actually a special car. Lincoln really wanted this thing to be intercontinental, not just one continent. They wanted to appeal all over the world to all kinds of buyers at all different ages. Unfortunately, they failed miserably, but it's not the car's fault. I was having a hard time getting a full shot of this thing on screen because it is so massive. The camera's right against the wall and it is so cool. It really isn't the car's fault that this thing was a total sales flop. It was a sign of the times. Buyers just didn't want big luxury coupes anymore. Now, while this car died in 1998 after six short model years, its main competitor, the Cadillac Eldorado, continued well into the 2000s, 2002, I think, and there were plenty of other European and Japanese automakers making mid-sized to larger luxury coupes in between then, Cadillac also came back with the, the CTS coupe and that weird ELR thing. But Lincoln, meanwhile, never made a comeback, unfortunately. They did have the foresight of building one of the first luxury SUVs that wasn't meant to go off-road at all, the Lincoln Navigator, and they've kind of focused on that and, and really never looked back. So it's kind of a sad story with the Mark 8, but its heart lived on in several other Lincoln models. We'll get to that in a bit, what's under the hood of this thing, but first, let me give you a tour of my latest beautiful purchase. So this Mark, 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 Mark is very different than the Mark series that came before it. Now, it does share the same platform as the Ford Thunderbird, the Mercury Cougar. You can kind of see it in the roof line there, but it is quite different. They did a lot of different things than the more basic car, starting with this front end. Look how aerodynamic it is. And this swooping grille, it is just absolutely beautiful and a spaceship. The arrow on this thing is just absolutely insane. And to take it even further, it tucks down another inch at highway speeds with the air ride suspension. This one's been bypassed because they all broke. It's on normal springs now. But that would give you extra lower aero, less, less ruined resistance on the highway. And that meant the MPG with a V8 could get 25 plus miles per gallon. Really impressive for a giant land yacht. And look at the size of this thing. It may be difficult to convey on camera, but just for reference, this thing is about six inches longer than a new Ford Explorer. Six inches longer. This thing is 207 or something inches long. It is absolutely ridiculous. And I made my way to the back here. This trunk kind of matches the front with the tail lights. And the later ones have neon here, actual real neon lights in the back, but uh, I don't like the newer nose on the later Mark series. I prefer this one, but all of them had this hump, just like the older Mark series were. That's where a spare tire would mount. So they did do a little bit of tribute to the older Mark series, but this is a radically different car. And as you can see, this Mark, 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 Mark is in excellent condition. It only has 89,000 miles on it, and I only paid $4,500 for this piece of Lincoln history. You didn't think I was gonna say piece, you thought I was gonna say some other piece. No, this is a really nice car for only 4,500 bucks, and I didn't get an exceptionally crazy good deal either. And really, it just proves you don't have to have a lot of money to be a car enthusiast. If I drove this to a car show or cars and coffee, and I popped the hood, which I'll show you in a little bit, we're not there yet, people would be 
impressed. It's, it's a really interesting, weird car from the Radwood era, and it was only $4,500 in excellent condition. Now let's look at the interior. I really like this one because it has the black interior. Most of them, when I look at them, they're tan. And as you can see, the weird shapes on the outside continue on the inside. This V-shaped dash is just so futuristic, but then they still threw some wood in here. Automatic climate control. And look at the shape of this. It's, it doesn't go back straight. There's a curve on this side. It is not symmetrical. This is all tilted, driver's focused, kind of like, say, a Toyota Supra. The gauges, once again, recessed. It looks kind of like a spaceship or a cockpit. And despite this thing's massive size, there's barely any room in the back seat. Meanwhile, the Explorer has three full rows of seating. Now, you're probably noticing a little TV screen here or kind of what looks like it. No, it's just an LCD display for the computer. And you heard the beep there. See, there's my average MPG, 21.2. Incredible for a car this size. You heard the beeping for the phone. So cool, so freaking cool. So not only is this interior really interesting to look at, just as interesting looking as the outside, it's also unbelievably comfortable. These seats are so soft and foamy. Look at the Lincoln crest here, so classy. And it's not a seat that's trying to be sporty like so many other luxury cars today where they try and give them a sporty edge and that gives you really thick bolsters and they wanna hold you in the seat. This is a proper luxury car. And I miss these kind of seats in luxury cars so much. But finally, let's get to the part where the Mark, 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 Mark is probably best remembered for, and that is the engine. Under the hood is a 4.6 liter, all aluminum 32 valve V8. And if you're thinking, well, no big deal, Ford put this in everything. Well, Lincoln was the first. And look at the presentation of this thing. There is some plastic fantastic, but they wanted to show the crazy intakes on this thing. I've never seen intakes like this where it looks like a, a bowl of spaghetti. And this engine was built to compete with the North Star. They called it the Intec 32 valve V8. And unlike the North Star, it was actually a good engine. But also unlike the North Star, they didn't put it in everything. The Lincoln Town Car didn't get this. No other Lincoln got this really while the Mark 8 was in production. But when they started slowing down the Mark 8 and they realized they had lost a lot of R&D and development and they realized how good this engine was, they started putting it in other things, including Mustangs, like the Mustang Cobra in 1996, I believe was the first year, where they put this engine in the Cobra, hopped it up a little bit, and it was the first Mustang in decades to have over 300 horsepower. So you can thank the Mark 8 for bringing back the Mustang to its former glory. Now this thing certainly isn't fast, but, but it's peppy enough. Now we can take it out for a drive. Oh boy. So yes, this is a big old luxury coupe. It is not fast. The zero to 60 doesn't get under seven seconds, but when you're in a car like this, you just really don't care because you don't care how quickly you get to somewhere. You don't even want to get out of the car. It is so nice and comfortable. Even with this one having the air ride bypass, I was a little worried buying it without the air ride, even though it is kind of troublesome. It still rides amazingly well and the seats are so comfortable. It feels like an old school land yacht, but then you look around and you realize you're in basically a spaceship. The hood just kind of disappears like the saucer section of the Enterprise D and the controls, everything. It, it just it just looks very it just looks very futuristic -y and, and spaceship -y. I, I absolutely love it. And I know I'm the weirdo here, I'm the outlier. I'm the kind of guy that wants to see wood paneling come back on cars, but it is kind of a shame that nobody is building a cheaper American luxury coupe competitor to say the top tier luxury brands. Mercedes still makes an S-Class coupe. Of course, there's the Rolls-Royce drophead coupe, really expensive six-figure-plus cars, and the Americans have nothing remotely to compete with it, even though they easily could. What they've done is open the door wide for Hyundai to come in and build big, beautiful luxury sedans that are kind of like 
old school American luxury sedans and, and cheaper like they could with old school American luxury sedans. And look how well they're doing. So maybe there is something here where Lincoln could come back with a Mark 9 kind of like this, deliver an amazing top tier luxury experience in a car that's say, you know, 50 to $70,000. Maybe, maybe it'd do well. Probably not, but it would, it would make me really happy. That's for sure. Oh, this is so nice. I'm on kind of a junky, crappy road, but I can't feel very much of it because this thing is just so smooth. Man, I haven't had a big luxury land out like this for quite a while, and this Mark, 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 Mark is certainly showing what what I was missing. But even though it is slow, it, it does have a great engine under the hood, and it does excellent burnouts. Excellent burnouts. It's, it's wet outside, so it's really easy to do, but they are... They are excellent. An added bonus to all this luxury is that it is a burnout machine. <laughs> so it is kind of a bummer that they don't make cars like this mark, 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 mark anymore, but that's okay because there are still plenty of these available in really nice condition for cheap. And that's because primarily older people bought them and they took really good care of them. So as far as a car for under $5,000 that gives you the ultimate luxury experience, I can't think of a better car than the Lincoln Mark 8. As far as it being rear wheel drive, V8, comfortable, fun to drive, interesting looking, it just has everything going for it. Sure, there's some heavily depreciated European coupes that you could buy for this kind of money or less, but as we've seen on this channel over and over again, your chances of making it to your destination are not good with those cars, unlike this Mark series. Now there's the Japanese cars like the Lexus SC400 you could find for under five grand, but they're kind of overblown. You couldn't find an SC400 this nice with another 100,000 miles for under five grand. It'd be, it'd be double that, so just, just forget about it. As for my plans for this thing, well, you could do a lot of modding to hop up the V8 under this hood, but I'm not gonna do that. And it's not broken either. It's not leaking anything. It starts right up, it drives perfectly. The tires are a little old and dry rotted, but I can handle that myself at any tire shop. So there's no reason to seeing the car wizard with this thing just yet. So I guess I'm just gonna enjoy it. I bought a good car. Gave you some good buyer's advice. This, this, is, this is different. So thank you for watching.